let us take a journey back in time. Um, I want to talk about this new book by Philippa Gregory, um, published by Simon & Schuster. This was sent to me. I know it looks like one very long book. I think it comes in at just over 850 pages, but this is actually three books that have already been published individually and they're in a nice bind up edition where they've all been squished together <laughs> to make this very intimidating looking thing. So the Order of Darkness series by Philippa Gregory. This has the first book Changeling, the second book Stormbringers and the very last one Fool's Gold. There's going to be a fourth book in this series, fourth and final I believe, um, but that's not out yet but this has been published in advance of that. Philippa Gregory is a household name in the UK. Um, she's just known for being a very prolific writer and publishing historical fiction. I think her most famous book is probably The Other Boleyn Girl but also the Cousins War series and just everywhere you look in a bookstore there's Philippa Gregory. Um, I'm so in awe of how much she manages to write. So the Order of Darkness series is a bit different to some of her other books because this is aimed at younger readers. Uh, the main characters are young characters. I'm just gonna give you a little summary. I'm gonna tell you what it says and then let you know my thoughts because believe it or not I read this entire beast of a book. <laughs> the year is 1460 and all signs point to it being the end of the world. Accused of heresy and expelled from his monastery, Luca Vero is recruited by a mysterious stranger to record the end of days. His first mission takes him to a nunnery where the women are showing terrible signs of possession under an imprisoned lady abbess, Isolde. Thrown together by danger, Luca and his true friend Freeze, alongside Isolde and her companion Ishrak embark on a daring journey across Europe as they uncover the secrets of Order of Darkness, racing to stay ahead of the end of the world. So Luca is a young man, I think he's 17 in the beginning, I can't quite remember, um, and his friend who's sort of a kind of servant boy and a, a, a horseman and that type of thing, Freeze, and then there's a, a priest who travels with him called Brother Peter and his job is to record things and to write things down because the whole point of the journey they're on is that Luca has been appointed as an inquirer to the fact that the world is going to end. So um, really he answers to the Pope, to the highest authority in the church, but he's involved with these kind of middlemen in this order that he doesn't really understand, but in order to be alive he has to do this duty which is to inquire into these weird and mysterious things that have been happening in the Christian world which they think points to the end of days. They meet these two young women. Um, Isolde is a lady, her father was a lord and she grew up in this beautiful um, estate but she was forced to flee and she doesn't have very much going for her anymore but she does have her best friend Ishrak who's such an interesting character because she is of a Muslim background. Um, Christianity and Christian religion is such a huge part of this book. I, I, don't, I don't think going into it you need to have a huge understanding of it or anything but it, it is historical so at that time in Europe religion was a big deal. Um, and so Ishrak is kind of an outsider to this group because she doesn't believe in their god and as a woman she's very feminist and she believes in her education and in her power to make choices and in her power to fight and stand up for herself. So all of these characters are interesting but you never quite know what's going on with them and how much they're keeping from each other even though eventually they, they become quite close as a unit and they travel as a group to these different villages and cities and, and countries within Europe. And it's kind of like an adventure travel story. If you think about how books like Lord of the Rings or Gulliver's Travels have stories within the bigger stories. So when, when a main character goes on a journey, they'll have smaller adventures within this bigger adventure of the journey and they'll meet kind of fleeting minor characters because the whole point of travelling is that you kind of leave people behind and you, you move forward. So so that's what happens. They're, they're travelling and there's there's little sort of capsules of stories happening. This was pitched to me as a medieval X-Files, which I think is a really good way of describing it. Um, but I really like the historical setting. I haven't read a book that's kind of set in this period since I was at university and I used to read quite a lot of medieval literature. Um, but this is kind of nice and lighter because the dialogue, and there is a lot of dialogue because they're young characters and they argue and there's a little bit of romance going on between a number of the characters. Um, 
so there's a lot of dialogue and the dialogue is contemporary it's not written to be accurate um, to that time period um, or to that class or to those countries so it is very readable particularly for younger readers the other thing that's interesting I can't remember the last time I read a sort of bind up of um, a number of books put together under one very nice greenish cover I think that really changes my experience as a reader even thinking back on how many books I read in May I was considering this as one book a book being a group of pages with a cover on either side but it's not it's three books and when you come to the end of the first book and all you have to do is turn a page to be in the second book then you don't really think of endings and conclusions in the same way and I think that kind of changes your perception as a reader because if you're waiting months for the next instalment and you jump into it you kind of have to force yourself to remember what happened and who are these characters I have to get to know them again whereas I didn't have to do that reading this as one long book I think if I force myself to think of them as three separate books my favourite would be the second one Stormbringers I think you really know the characters by that point but you start to see different sides to them and the religious aspect is really kind of pulled out in a lot more detail and you get a bit more information about this order of darkness. Um, so the second one was my favourite but I really enjoyed all of them. I was really surprised by how quickly I read this. It does have little illustrations at the start of every chapter which are in the style of the time. So a walled city I'm not sure if you can see or and you have maps at the beginning of each new book. So that's Venice as it was and I think it does feel very believable. It was nice for me to read what I would consider modern characters in the way that you sort of get to know them and get to know their feelings and the way they speak their minds in a historical setting where I think books that I've read from that period the characters just they they, they don't exist the way they exist today so yeah it's a nice kind of combining of worlds I really enjoyed this so there you go that's what I've been reading bit of a change of genre for me but I really enjoyed it um, by the time you watch this video this book should be available so there'll be a link in the description published by Simon & Schuster of course yeah I'm actually really looking forward to the fourth book in the series because I've spent so much time reading this that now it's all I can think about so let me know if you've read any of these three books um, or if you've read anything by Philippa Gregory in terms of her vast vast collection of books that she's published over the years i think that's all i have to say thank you very much for watching and i will see you soon happy reading bye